Hello beautiful souls and welcome to another episode of the Perspective Matters podcast. I'm your host Shakira Moore. It has been a long time since I last did an episode and yes, I know, <laughs> I know, I promised I would be consistent and I promised I would put good content together for you guys and I didn't keep up my end of the bargain, I didn't keep my promise. So... Let me start by apologizing for not holding up my end of the bargain and not providing great content for you. Life happens and that's just it. A lot of things have been going on so I just didn't have the opportunity to really record the kind of content that I wanted to share with you but I'm stuck at home like everybody else. And this is a great opportunity for me to just start producing some excellent content again because what else is there to do? So this episode, I want to share just some tips from my perspective on how to cope and deal with being indoors for an unknown and extended period of time. So unless you've been living under a rock, (laughs) then you would all know that right now the world is dealing with COVID-19 and the impact it is having globally. So it's hard to avoid the issue, but I'm not going to dwell on it because you're hearing it enough from all angles. So I will not be one of those persons who is going to dwell on this issue either, but instead just focus on other things. So as I was deciding what I would talk about and what I would share with you, the idea of setting boundaries was the constant theme that kept popping up. And I was thinking about the next episode for quite a while before actually recording. And it's so ironic that while I was thinking about boundaries and setting boundaries, the universe had some tricks up her sleeve and would in fact force us to set boundaries, all be them physical. So we're all indoors. We're all practicing some form of social distancing. So <laughs> what better thing to talk about? I hope you're all doing well. I hope you have strategies and measures in place to cope and thrive, not just survive, but thrive um, during this time. And this is a great opportunity to test how resilient you are and test what kind of coping skills you have and wherever you think you're falling short. Well, now is the time to really put some measures in place and, and really focus on yourself and focus on how well you cope with being thrown a serious curveball. So work from home, a nice concept, right? The idea that you don't have to be in the office, you can actually be at home and still be productive. And for some people, that actually works. They have a space set up where they can be productive for the eight hours in the day as if they were actually at a place of work. And then for others, it's a complete challenge because one, they don't have the space in which to really be productive for whatever reason and two it's hard for them to get into that mind frame of being focused and committed for those eight hours when the tv's calling your name (laughs) when the sofa is calling your name when all you want to do is snack and just binge watch everything that you can possibly binge watch on netflix or any other streaming platform that you particularly enjoy and then there are those of us who are in the happy middle so If you can create a space in your home that is dedicated to work, I encourage you to do so because that space is going to help you get into the mindset and to keep that frame of mind that for these eight hours, six hours, however long you're required to be on and required to be working, then you create that environment where you can be productive. So if there's a corner in your bedroom, a living room, whatever place or space you have, if you can set something up that gives you that feel, that look, that okay, this is the space I'm going to do work, then by all means do it. This is notwithstanding that there are some of us who have kids. (laughs) And talking about boundaries, kids don't respect boundaries. So they will be all up in your space. So I'm not going to pretend that that isn't a reality. It really is. So how do you mitigate against that? Well, 
there's very little you can do because kids don't respect boundaries. <laughs> so you create your space and they'll be all up in it. But what can you do there? Your kids, right? So you just have to find a way to cope. Just make the best of it. Um, be patient with yourself. Be patient with them. Yes, you will feel aggravated and it is okay to be aggravated. It is absolutely normal to be frustrated and just want that space and that time to do work because it's not easy trying to type around a kid that's bouncing and that's just super hyper in your lap. Not fun. Not my idea of fun at least when I'm trying to be productive, but that is the hand you have been dealt. So by all means, play it. Now, if you have kids at home, <laughs> how do you help them to maintain a routine? How do you keep them occupied when you honor your own commitments to work, to your own business, to whatever ideas and plans and activities that you need to focus on? Well, there are several websites, apps that you can use to um, keep them occupied you know your kids, you know what holds their interest. So those are the things that you need to employ. So if your kids are super active and they like to be busy, um, like running up and down and tearing down the place, then you're going to just have to find situations or solutions that meet that requirement. And if your kids like to sit and be quiet and read and color and paint, then you have to create those opportunities for them. So as best as possible, keep them on some form of routine that does not necessarily deviate too much from their schedule if they were in school. Because the idea is you want them to be able to adjust or to readjust to their old routine if and when we are able to resume normal lives and in their um, case be able to return to school so have a schedule set up it's not going to be as strict and as rigid as if they were in school because the reality is they're not but have them on a routine and put yourself on a routine too so or keep the routine that you have so if you are accustomed to getting up at six then try to get up at six if you get up half an hour later or even an hour later that's fine but the idea is do not deviate too far from your normal routine because if and when you have to return to work, getting up at 10 and noon to be at work is not going to be an easy thing to readjust to. So try your best to establish new routines that do not deviate too much from your existing ones or if you can keep your existing routines, by all means do so. Virtual game nights, virtual meetups. So we're all indoors, but we still have to be social because that's who we are as humans. We are social creatures. We absolutely need that interaction. So what are the opportunities available for us to do or get together and for us to actually interact with friends, colleagues, loved ones, whoever? There are a couple websites that allow you to host games nights. There are some that are better than others. So the ones that will work with for you, you'll just have to determine purely by trial and error. So there is one that my colleagues and I tried just recently that worked. It is the website called gartic.io. Not the sexiest website, but it actually, it actually works. So I'll link the suggestions that I'm going to talk about in the episode. I'll link them in the show notes so you can check them out for yourselves. So this site actually allows you to draw and then everybody else in the room, quotes, use, using air quotes here, in the room to guess what it is you're trying to draw. It's not a private room, so you will find random people popping in, but as long as they aren't weird, <laughs> it's fine. Kind of reminds me of the good old chat room days. Yes, I'm dating myself. Chat rooms, what is that? Hmm. Um, Google it. <laughs> but this website kind of reminds me of the good old chat room days. But it's a fun activity to do. It's interesting to try and replicate whatever word you're given to draw with the mouse. So if you're good at paint, you will excel. <laughs> if you are not good at paint, then this game will be hard. But it's all in fun. So I would suggest hosting like a games night with your team, with your colleagues, with whoever, and then see whether or not you have a budding artist within you. There are other websites I would suggest you check out. 
to see if they have value to you and to your family. So for kids, if you have kids and they need to be kept occupied, depending on their age, then abcmouse.com might be a good website for you to check out. So I think that site ranges from two to eight. So if your kids fall within that bracket, then I would suggest you give that a go. If you're not already subscribed, they have several different games and activities that focus not just on the math and the sciences, but the humanities and just a fun way for kids to learn and to develop cognitive skills and just to keep them entertained and, and occupied. So I would suggest you check that website out. And again, I will link it in the show notes. If your children like books and they may not always be able to keep still, then I would suggest that you try Audible for kids. So that's an opportunity for them to find books that they can relate to, books that they may like, and they may necessarily... They may not necessarily have to be seated or just to be in one place because it's hard for a child to sit still even under these circumstances. So if your child loves to run around but you could actually get them to listen to the book, then that might work. For those of us who have always wanted to take up meditation, there is an app that I use that's called Let's Meditate. And it has guided meditations that you can follow and meditations that have different benefits to them. So if you want to feel grateful at the end of your session, if that's what you want to practice and to achieve, then they have sessions for that. If you want to be mindful, if you want to release stress and tension. So the app caters to several different needs. So if you've always wanted to take up meditation and you just never had the opportunity or the time to do so, well, now is a great time to try because you have no excuse in terms of, oh, I have to rush through the door so I can't take the 10, 15 minutes to stop and meditate because there is no door to rush to. There is no traffic to beat. There is no bus to catch. There is no train to catch. There is no cab to hail. Like you legit have none of those excuses anymore. You are going nowhere. So now is a great time to take up meditation. It will help to keep you calm. It will help to reduce your anxiety. It will help to keep you focused and mindful as you continue to go through this new experience where you're required to stay indoors for a significant period of time. If you're into fitness and you're no longer able to go to the gym because everywhere is closed, but your fitness and your health and how your body looks and feels, it's all important to you, then there are a number of persons I actually follow on Instagram and there is one account I particularly enjoy because she does exercises that target every area of the body. And yes, I said she, but her exercises are not exclusive to women. Men, you can also do the exercises because they do target different areas of the body. So just find the areas that work for you and just do the exercises for the, the different body parts or the different um, target areas that you want to work on for that particular session. So the account is Angus Swede. I hope I'm saying it correctly, but I, of course, again, will link the handle in my notes. So that's one account that I rely on in terms of new and different workout routines to incorporate within my daily schedule. Those are some of the accounts and things I, I employ now that I'm confined <laughs> to home. And it's so interesting that we're all indoors and we're finding different ways to cope and that just speaks to how resilient we can be if we give ourselves the opportunity to be resilient and how we can create a new normal for ourselves and I think this was long overdue the world was running full tilt over a cliff there was just too much happening and there was just too much going wrong and the reality is we are the virus. 
If you haven't seen the memes circulating, then I'm sure you'll see them at some point soon enough. But there are reports that the world is doing better. <laughs> now that everybody's indoors, there isn't the phenomenon that's called traffic that's contributing to the smog and the pollution. Like, none of that is happening anymore. So the world is finally allowed to breathe, to take a break, <laughs> to heal and repair itself. And it's a very interesting reality to face, to admit to yourself and to recognize that you are a part of the problem, that you are a part of the virus <laughs> that is killing this earth by virtue of your very existence. And this is an opportunity for us to wake up and to realize that we really should not take this place we call home, Mother Earth, we really should not take her for granted because there is nowhere else for us to go. I don't know how far the scientists are in terms of being able to maintain life on Mars, if that is even a thing, and I suspect it is. I don't know how far we are from that and the resources that are required for us to be able to replicate life on Mars as if we were on Earth. But this is, this is home. This is where we call home. And if we care about home, then we have to take care of it. We have to take care of her. So my hope is coming out of this situation or love for planet Earth or sense of how small we are in the grand scheme of things, how insignificant we are in the grand scheme of things will help to fuel significant changes in our life, i.e. recycling. That goes a far way in protecting the earth. It is mind-blowing the volume of plastic that is dumped in our oceans daily. It's, it really is mind-blowing. And for every juice or for every CPG that you purchase, I mean for every consumer packaged good that you purchase, you are a part of the problem. I am a part of the problem. We're all a part of the problem. So we need to come up with ways and means to reduce this problem. Recycling. Using the plastic and repurposing it for other useful means. So I've seen so many videos where old tires are repurposed to create sandals for children. Repurposed to create buildings. Bottles are repurposed to create buildings. Like there is so much we can do with all the waste that we have. If we just put our big brains together and come up with ways that we can continue to add value rather than just taking because we are functioning like parasites. All we do is take and take and take and very few of us give back. And there's going to come a point when the earth is going to have enough. And I feel like right now we're getting a warning. Like this is a warning for us to really shape up and do better. Because we're parasites. There is, <laughs> there is no way around it. Like we contribute to so much pollution. We, we're very close to destroying this earth. And when we destroy it, where do we live? Move to another planet and destroy that one as well? So there are some habits that we need to change. This culture of consumerism, where if something is torn, throw it out and get a new one. What happened to mending stuff? I grew up in a time where consumerism was not as rampant as it is now. And if something was torn, you'd mend it. You'd take it to the tailor. <laughs> you'd take it to the dressmaker. And they would mend it because the idea of getting something new because there is a tear was just absurd. Your shoes needed mending. Take it to the shoemaker. Why waste money to buy another pair when they're still perfectly good shoes and in still perfectly good working condition? No, this whole concept of fast fashion 
is so rampant. It's cheap, it's fast, and it's available. So, your favorite pair of jeans are torn? Oh well, chuck it. Throw it out, for those of you who thought I cursed. <laughs> Throw it out and get yourself another pair. And what happens to that old pair of jeans that you throw out? Where does it end up? In a landfill somewhere. And you don't know, think about it. You don't know, think about the implications of, of an insignificant act like throwing out clothes. But really and truly, the impact is so great because you're helping to destroy the earth. The amount of water that goes into dyeing a pair of jeans. Ridiculous. The chemicals and the bleach that are used to give you that acid wash that you love so much. If acid wash is still a thing, I don't know. Not really following fashion all that much, if at all. But those are the kinds of things that we need to think about. Everywhere you need to go, it's so easy for you to hop in a car and go. Even if it is a five-minute walk. Park the car and go for a walk. Use your two legs more often. Recycle. Today is the first day of spring. When you're doing your spring cleaning and you're doing your decluttering, those clothes that you told yourself you lose weight for, I think it's time that you need to have that honest chat. Are you really? And if you are, and you need that motivation, then I say more power to you. Keep it. But if you know within yourself, and you're honest enough to admit it, that listen, I'm not going to fit into this. <laughs> Again, donate it. Don't throw it out, especially if it is still in good condition. Donate it. A colleague of mine told me about Diabetes Canada, for those of you who are living in Canada. And they have a system where they collect gently worn, gently used articles of clothing and other items which can be found on their website. And all you have to do is bag the items and label the bags with D, the capital D. So they'll know that the bags are for them to collect. And on the website, you can schedule a pickup time or a day rather. And they operate between the hours of 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Just leave the bags in your lobby or if you live in a home or house, leave them on the porch, whatever, somewhere where they can access the bags without having to enter your home for them. They'll come collect it. Super convenient, super easy. And you're not adding to the trash that already exists. Somebody else can benefit from your donation. And it's a nice feeling to know that you donated something. So you're at home with way more time on your hands because now you don't have to commute to and from work because you're working from home. Take the opportunity to do some spring cleaning, declutter your closet, declutter your kid's closet and see what you can donate. Teach them to get into the habit of donating and giving back rather than adding to an already massive pile of trash. So, that's my two cents for today. I hope you continue to keep well. I hope you have good coping mechanisms in place as we face each day that we are forced to be indoors. Social distancing does not mean social isolation. So continue to reach out to your friends. Continue to reach out to your loved ones. Check on your colleagues because we are by nature social beings. So we still do need to interact. So if you find someone has become a little bit distant, check on them. Because this is not an easy time for everyone. Be aware of your feelings. Pay attention to your feelings. Pay attention to how you react and respond to other people around you if you live in a household with more than one person other than yourself. 
because this is a special time. You had the excuse of work and school to be away from your loved ones and now you are around them 24 7 so that in and of itself will present some unique challenges you for sure will get on each other's nerves more and if your space is confining and there isn't enough <laughs> places for you to create your own little territory so you're not invading anybody else's personal space and your personal space is not being invaded then it's going to be a pretty interesting time so be mindful of your feelings be mindful of the feelings of others around you because they too are facing the same kind of day and circumstances that you're facing do things to keep your energy up play music if you can if you're not disturbing anybody else within the household Light some incense if you have incense to light. Order some online. I think Amazon and other delivery services are still up and running. So look into that. Incense are a great way to keep the space nice, smelling good. And an environment that smells good usually makes you feel good. If you are allergic, please do not indulge. We don't want you to trigger your sinuses or cause an asthma attack the less burden we put on the health system the better it will function so of course light your incense if you will not have a reaction to it if you have a diffuser at home and you have essential oils then by all means use your diffuser and your essential oils lavender is a great oil to use if you have it it helps to keep you calm it helps to keep you relaxed it's a great smelling oil so I would encourage you to use that if you have lemongrass mint eucalyptus tea tree those oils will help to clean the air they smell good they will help to keep you calm and relaxed and that is exactly how and what you need to be during this time calm and relax try as best as possible to keep your routine going and whatever works for you do it taking a nap is what will help you cope then by all means take a nap a nap is a great way to reset and you wake up feeling refreshed and renewed and that's a great feeling to have so by all means take a nap dance if you need to if you need to snack then that may require you exercising some self-control and if you have none then be prepared to deal with the repercussions of not being able to fit into any of your clothes when you're required to go back to work so think about the consequences of your actions as well in that regard but my beautiful souls thank you so much for listening i do appreciate your patience it's been a while since i've been on and i will silently promise you and myself that I will be consistent in producing great content for you. I have no more excuses. I have nowhere to go. I have no place to be. So I will for sure be working on delivering great content for you. And I really do want to talk about boundaries in the next episode. So I will I will sit with that one some more because now that you're forced to be in the same space with people, how do you maintain those boundaries? So I think that's what we'll talk about in the next episode. So thank you so much for listening. It was my pleasure sharing with you. And until next time, remember, there are two sides to every coin. Just flip it to get the full view. Catch you next week. Bye.